Hi everybody, welcome back to A Better Man with your host Jit Tong. And today I'll be talking about one of the most misunderstood schemes in Singapore. In this three-part series, I will demystify the common misconception of uh, CPF, pitfalls when using CPF, and lastly, how you can use CPF uh, for your retirement planning. The first trilogy, the common misconceptions of CPF. Before delving into a 10-point video on the various misconceptions of CPF, I think it's extremely important that we look into the history of CPF and understand what the government was thinking when it came up with uh, this strategy. If you like this kind of video, please smash the like button so that I can claim medical insurance for it. Wait, it's not funny. The CPF as we know it today was set up in 1955 to encourage workers to save a portion of their monthly income to build up their retirement savings. In 1968, the public housing scheme, similar to our current ordinary account, was introduced so that Singaporeans can use their CPF savings to pay for their mortgage. This was done so that Singaporeans do not have to pay rental fees when we are retired. By the 70s, with a prosperous economy, the CPF contribution rate rose as a result of the rising cost of living. The special account was introduced so that there is greater emphasis on retirement savings. Members were allowed to invest their CPF monies under the Approved Investment Scheme, also known as the CPF Investment Scheme today. And then in 84, the MediSafe account was set up so that members can save for their medical and hospitalization expenses. The MediShield was later introduced as a medical insurance scheme for long-term and serious illness so that in the event of a chronic illness, the member will be covered by insurance and their savings will not be wiped out. To ensure Singaporeans do not outlive their CPF savings, the minimum sum scheme was implemented, also known as CPF Life Annuity Scheme today. This ensures that Singaporeans have monthly payouts for life. The government introduced the Workfare Income Supplement in 2007 to supplement the retirement savings for older low-wage workers. And in 2013, to better protect Singaporeans aged 65 and above from healthcare, healthcare costs, the government introduced the Pioneer Generation Package which promises more subsidies, top-ups and lower premiums for medical life. And now that we know that the government has our interest in mind uh, when they introduce CPF, let's dive into the 5 common misconceptions. Let us know below in the comments if these misconceptions were what you thought initially. Also, I'd like to apologize for the construction noise because recently there's been a lot of construction around my neighborhood and uh, this is the best I can do. So number one, misconception. You don't get CPF contributions if you are doing part-time. And that is a big false simply because by legislation, as long as you are a Singaporean or a PR, you earn more than $50 a week and uh, is under a contract of service, you are eligible for CPF and your employer has to contribute to your CPF. Misconception number two, uh, you can use your CPF money to uh, purchase a HDB flat and then sell it and keep the profits. And that is definitely a no. Although you can use your CPF ordinary account to pay for the down payment of a HDB flat or use it to pay off your uh, monthly mortgage, please note that when you sell your HDB, the amount that you took out from the ordinary account initially, you have to pay it back plus the interest had it not been used to pay for your HDB flat. So a very simple way to calculate this is the amount of money that you uh, took out from the ordinary account at the start and how many years has it been since then. And every year you just add 2.5% which is the interest rate that the ordinary account provides. Of course, any proceeds after that amount is yours to keep. So misconception number three is that you cannot use your CPF to pay for your mortgage after 55. And that is uh, somewhat wrong because at 55, your special account and your ordinary account will be combined to form your RA, which is your retirement account. And during then, you can opt to reserve a portion of your ordinary account to be used for mortgage payment. Alternatively, if you're still working after 55, you know, your contributions by your employer or by yourself uh, into your ordinary account can be used to pay off your HDB mortgage. This concession number four, you need to top up your MediSafe account 
until the basic healthcare sum. So unlike the basic retirement sum, the basic healthcare sum is the maximum amount in your Medisafe that you can have and any surplus will be transferred to your ordinary account or your special account. So there's no need to worry, it's not a requirement to meet it. Instead, it's a maximum that you have to keep within. And lastly, misconception number five, I think this is a big one, is that money in your CPF cannot be taken out. And that is simply not true. Reason being, at 55, your ordinary account and your special account will be combined to form your retirement account. So if your retirement account uh, has more than the full retirement sum, changes every year, lah, right? And you pledge the full retirement sum in your retirement account, the rest of the proceeds are yours to keep. Or you can choose to leave it in your retirement account to earn 6% interest per annum, which is pretty good considering it's risk-free and you know, just let the government do its job. 6% is pretty good if you ask me. Alternatively, if you uh, are unable to meet the full retirement sum or you do not want to put in so much money, you, know, you can uh, pledge your basic retirement sum which is about half of the full retirement sum and your property. So what this means is that uh, you use your property to tell the government that oh, I have a property and I, do not, uh, I will not have to pay rent when I'm older. So the government is assured that you, you are safe in that sense. However, do note that uh, for this to work, you must have a HDB flat with lease till you are 95. A very simple way to calculate this is to subtract your age from 95 and that duration, the amount of years, is the amount of years that your HDB flat must have. Of course, there are some people who do not fall into either of these two categories. You can always check out the link in the description. I, I included a link from a CPF website which uh, showcases every other scenario that is possible. You can take a look, but for the vast majority of viewers out there, I'm pretty sure you'll fall into either of these two categories. Lah. Especially if you follow my strategy, which I will disclose in the subsequent two videos. So please do subscribe. And so there we have it, all five CPF misconceptions. In the next episode, I will delve into mistakes made uh, when using CPF and how you should use CPF to optimize your savings so that you're better prepared for retirement. And if this is what you like, please smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. Really, I really really appreciate uh, all the support that you guys have been giving me, especially to my 50 friends out there. Thank you so much for believing in me. Uh, you have no idea how much this means to me, especially because uh, this is my first time doing YouTube. And I know there are a lot of things that I'm not doing perfectly fine. Maybe it's the way I present things, too serious or something. But I really, really appreciate the amount of support uh, that you guys have been giving me. And so thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.